Stellaris is a game with many resources, like good god it took me 8 minutes to summarise these resources in my beginner's guide which you should totally check out by the way shameless plug. Learning how to keep all of your resources in the green is half the battle of the game, as running out of any one of them can have catastrophic effects on your empire and of course your game, so I thought I'd make this video to give you some tips on all the ways to make each kind of resource to help you stay in the green on the supplies that matter most. Just before we get into how to build a strong economy, why not also learn a new skill with today's sponsor, Skillshare. By now, no doubt you've heard all about how Skillshare has thousands of classes for pretty much any subject from photo and video editing all the way over to life and general well-being. If you have a specific program or a skill that you're trying to learn, then Skillshare has you covered with classes for pretty much every skill level and goal. I've been using Skillshare myself to work through classes by fellow content creator Jordi Vanderput, who has classes on Premiere Pro, Basics and Advanced, as well as After Effects and more. This is giving me a better understanding of the tools I use every single day to make videos and they help me make better and more complex videos even faster. I've also been looking into classes for creative script writing to help me plan out more entertaining and engaging videos from the get-go. Now if you need any other reasons to go with Skillshare, I'm going to give you three, count them, three different reasons. Reason the first, it's totally ad-free, so you don't have to worry about any distractions, you can get completely engrossed in the class and the learning, without having to worry about having to skip an ad every few minutes. Reason the second, new classes are getting added all the time, so if you kind of run out of stuff that you want to pick up, then wait till next month, because chances are something else is going to come up that's going to interest you. And reason the third, the entire catalogue now has subtitles for Spanish, French, Portuguese and German, so if English isn't your first language, but one of those is, you're in luck. So if you want to expand your skill set today, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description, one free month of premium. That means you can try out any class that you want, see how you like it, and then decide where to go from there. Huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, and now, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to mention here is something that can be used to stock up on every resource in the game, and that is the Galactic Market. You can fit so many resources in this bad boy. From this simple menu, you can manually or automatically buy and sell pretty much every resource in the game. Of course, the main currency in Stellaris is energy credit, so everything is valued in credits. What this means is you spend them to buy any resource, and whenever you sell any resource, you get them in return. As I said, you can do this either manually or automatically. Manually it means you go to this menu and buy and sell in your chosen quantity to add or take away from your stockpile. Using this method, you do have to manually click the trades yourself, but if you keep an eye on these numbers, you can ensure you're buying and selling at the height of the market to keep things as profitable as possible. Automatically, it means you set up trades to occur monthly, which of course is reflected in your monthly resource changes. You can't watch the market to sell the best time using this method, but you can set your minimum sell and maximum buy prices to ensure you aren't giving your resources away, but equally aren't being scammed when buying. This ensures you always buy and sell for a price you're happy with, but if the market isn't meeting your requirements, your trades simply won't go through, so your resources can fluctuate constantly. The market is volatile and changes constantly, so making sure everything is stable can be a massive challenge if you're relying on this, but if credits are no object, this can be a very viable option. So as long as you have enough credits, you can buy all the resources in the game and stay in the green and you win. End of video, like, sub and I'll smell you later. Now obviously most of the time you won't have enough credits to be able to do this, so you have to get a little bit more creative. In my opinion, the market should be used for one of three things. To get rid of extra resources you don't need, to get hold of resources you physically cannot access right now, and to prevent a death deficit whilst you get your main production sorted. If you can help it, you want to only use it to clear out excess and produce everything else in-house or in space, I guess. Mining stations are the simplest and most ubiquitous method of collecting resources, especially in the early game. See, I used a big word. That means I'm a big smart. Every time your science ships survey a system, they will identify resource deposits. When you claim that system, you can then build mining stations to add those resources to your monthly income, and as long as you don't lose the system or station, those will remain constant throughout your entire game. You can also unlock new resource deposits in systems through researching anomalies, so it's a good idea to send one science ship out to survey as fast as possible, then chase it with another science ship to complete all the anomalies left behind. There really isn't much more to say about this one. If you own a system, you want to build all the mining stations you can first to maximise your resources. Resources. Planets have a little bit more nuance to create resources and often it's a trade-off. Of course you can use districts to create raw materials like minerals, food and energy credits, and then more processed materials like alloys and consumer goods by consuming minerals. Buildings are where things tend to get a little bit more complicated. For almost all of these you consume in one resource to create another, and almost all of these require energy to upkeep them. You have your simple mineral consumers like alloy foundries, chemical plants, etc. These simply just eat minerals to make other resources and are really just that simple to use. Just make sure you don't consume too many minerals or energy 
and you'll be golden. Then we have the slightly more complicated buildings that not only produce some resources, but also increase the output of workers already on that planet. These are a little bit more complex to min-max, but they can give you a massive boost in resources if used correctly. For example, if I use a mineral purification plant on a planet that's got a fairly balanced build with only three mining districts, I'm going to be getting six minerals from those six mining jobs. However, if I have a planet that is totally focused on mineral output and nothing else, and I have 10 districts, that's another 20 minerals per purification plant. If you build your planets for very specific things, rather than having them all be quite generalized, you can make massive amounts of resources. This is yet another reason why automating planets and sectors is a bad idea if you want to min-max. You can't force the computer to build this way, so manage your planets yourself and be specific and you'll profit in the long run. Of course, early on, it might be necessary to be more balanced to keep your empire afloat, but later on when you can afford it, you'll want to specialize to get the most out of your worlds. Also remember that everything on a planet needs workers to, well, work. So don't go building five alloy foundries at once if you have zero unemployed pops, as they're going to be sat idle until you have the workers to get them up and running. Later on, this doesn't really matter much, and I'd say build your planets up to the max and leave them to catch up later, but early on when you're low on most things, build up slowly to avoid stretching yourself too thin. You can also set the designation of your planets to further boost output for a specific resource. These cost literally nothing to change and rarely have any downsides, so make sure you pick the best one for each planet to min-max that bad boy and ensure your production is as high as it can be. Later on in your game, once you unlock gene modding, you want to make sure your empire's population is optimized for resource production to keep your economy as strong as possible. Adding traits like agrarian, ingenious, industrious, strong and very strong will cause pops of that species to produce more resources when doing the very same job as any other pop. So if you can pick them up, it's well worth the research needed to apply the template. Then any other world you inhabit after that, you'll just be able to send those pops out there to begin with. One final tip for planets is to keep their stability nice and high, as planets with a super high rating will have an increase to their resource production. You can keep this high by having a steady supply of amenities, no overcrowding and no crime. Moving on now to edicts, policies and traditions. First of all, edicts, you can use them to increase the production of certain goods at the cost of a monthly unity cost. Most of the subsidies options can improve the output of certain planetary resources at the cost of more credits upkeep for workers that create those resources. This of course means you'll be trading credits for extra production, but on the bright side, if you can't afford it, you can switch these off instantly and you'll only have paid for a month of use. These are of course great options when you're flush with credits and want to boost one area of your planetary production, and as long as you can afford it, there's no harm in leaving these on for your entire game. There's also the Omnifarious Acquisition Ambition, which gives you a huge boost to mineral production without any energy upkeep, but it does cost a massive amount of unity, so make sure you have plenty of that and you should be fine. Edicts aren't going to save your production if it's already low, but they will give you a massive boost if you have a decent income going. As with any percentage base bonus, the higher your base production, the more value you're going to get out of this. As for policies, this one is real simple, since only one option here makes any difference. You can change your production policy to focus either on extraction or manufacturing. This augments your workers to either boost the production of raw materials by 20% at the cost of manufactured materials falling by the same amount, or the opposite. This can be useful when you have a massive excess of, say, minerals, energy and food, but lack alloys and consumer goods. Just remember that changing this policy locks in for 10 years, so if something changes in the first two and you need more raw materials, tough to tongos I'm afraid, so only use this when you have a good idea of what you're going to need for the next decade. Traditions are another one that we can keep very brief. Most trees have options you can pick up that improve the production of certain workers or resources, so be sure to take a look at them when picking to get the most out of them that you can. Again, this will be a percentage-based increase to your current production rather than flat increases. I'm also going to tack research on the end of this because you complete texts that increase resource output, so if you see one for a resource you need, then go for it, but since you're going to complete all text by the end anyway, this one just happens naturally over time, so you don't need to focus too hard on it. Finally, we come to enclaves. These are our final method of generating resources, and these are much more specific, normally just one kind of resource in exchange for another. Trader enclaves are the most common for generating resources. They can offer you specialist resources, which are any of the options in this dropdown, in exchange for credits on a monthly basis. Their prices can change over time, and each deal made lasts for 10 years at a time. If you ask me, these are another method of supporting you while you cannot access resources yourself or are facing a temporary deficit and should not be relied upon forever, as if their prices take a large change, you may be left up shit creek without a paddle if you can't afford it. Other enclaves can provide you with resources, though not quite as reliably. Engineering enclaves can scrap your unwanted fleets in exchange for alloys. This of course isn't great for constant resources, but if you're trying to get rid of a fleet anyway, it's not a bad way to get some value back rather than straight up disbanding them or sending them to their death. You do have to pay a fee of energy, so you'll have to weigh up if it's worth the cost of the roughly 10% of alloys that you'll get back. And a final honourable mention here at the end, yes, you can trade with other empires, either with the passive trade value stuff, commercial packs or actual trade deals. Passive trade and commercial packs simply get you credits, which are nice and all, but nothing groundbreaking. 
Active trade deals are a lot more exciting since you can trade any of your resources for any of theirs. This is another great way to get rid of stuff that you don't need in exchange for stuff you do need, but of course you need a faction willing to trade with you to accept a deal at all. The reason this is an honourable mention is twofold. First, other empires will look out for themselves first, so likely won't be giving you the best price. And second, they're other empires, so most of the time you're probably going to be at war with them or others, so relying on them for resources can be a surefire way to screw yourself over should they take a disliking to you or get wiped out by someone else. And that is just about everything I can think of to help you build a strong economy in Stellaris. Let me know if I missed any methods in the comments below. If you like this video, then be sure to let me know. And if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. If you're feeling especially big penis, then consider becoming a supporter of the channel. Doing so gets you all sorts of exclusive goodies and content, such as merch discounts, early access to behind the scenes, and a shout out at the end of every single video. Massive thanks to Henry Tucker for his support at the officer's tier. Huge thanks to every single supporter. One last thank you for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Dumders, and I will see you next turn.